the fact is, Holy Ghost, God in the earth today speaks a lot. And he speaks about himself. Himself is included in the things that he speaks about. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about the Holy Ghost as God. He's the one that Jesus sent. He's the only part of the Godhead in the earth today. And I'm going to be speaking about him in this capacity. Now, warning, what I'm going to say tonight will shake your doctrine. The way you think about things, the way you believe about things, it will change your reality that you live in. Now, if that's not something that you want, take the blue pill. The story ends here, and you can return to your sad old religious thinking and just live a while and die and go to heaven. But if you choose to see the truth, take the red pill, and we'll see how far this goes because this well runs really deep. 2 Timothy 3 16. All scripture. Say all scripture. How many scriptures is that? Well, this is the scripture. I don't know if you knew that or not, but this the Bible here is the scripture and all of it. Go like this all of it, meaning all scripture, right? All scripture is given by inspiration of who? God. Inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine right so it, well, the things I'm gonna share tonight will be profitable you, for you for doctrine does that make sense all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction say correction what if you need some correction what if I use the scriptures that are given by inspiration of God and they correct you they correct your doctrine I'm told you this is gonna shake your doctrine and correct your doctrine hopefully if you'll stay tuned for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works now if we read this again all scripture is given by inspiration of God now I'm going to take you to another verse of scripture but first I want you to see make sure we get this because I'm trying to take you somewhere all scripture is given by inspiration of God so the scripture is given by God say that the scripture is given by God are we there second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture what are we talking about prophecy of the scripture scripture right no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation verse 21 for the prophecy or the scripture came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by who the Holy Ghost now if you remember in 2nd Timothy 3 16 it said all scripture was given by inspiration or the breathing of God and we all said yes God gave the scriptures well here it says that holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost this is implying who God is who is God the Holy Ghost now this is very important because we're talking about the scriptures we're talking about who spoke the scriptures who said the scriptures invariably it has to return back to it was God the Holy Ghost are you getting this so God the Holy Ghost breathed out these scriptures if they were moved upon by God who were they moved upon by God the Holy Ghost so is the Holy Ghost God now I think we can see right here from the just these two verses of Scripture that the Holy Ghost is God and he's the one breathing out the scriptures it's important it matters it must be answered it must be settled in you that the Holy Ghost is God and he's the one saying these scriptures therefore when I open up the Bible and I read it who's speaking to me the Holy Ghost Old Testament 
jeremiah chapter now all scripture is given by inspiration of god you still here all scripture does that mean the old testament scriptures yeah well then who breathed them out the holy ghost holy men of old were old men, old testament scriptures uh men old men yeah they were they were the old time men they were moved upon by the holy ghost who is god so jeremiah chapter one let's read verse four then the word of the lord came unto me saying before i form, formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest out of the womb i sanctified thee and i ordained thee prophet to the nations i sanctified thee i ordained thee now get it out of your religious thinking and come over to this side who is saying that had to be the holy ghost do you understand verse 6 then said i ah oh lord god behold i cannot speak for i'm a child remember holy men of god spake as they were moved by specifically the holy ghost but the lord said unto me say not i'm a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee who's telling him to go and who's sending him who's the i talking here has to be the holy ghost that i shall send thee and whatsoever i command thee who's commanding him who and whatsoever i command thee thou shalt speak let's say he does speak these things that this this lord god is telling him to say and it gets written down in a book like this would this include be included in the all scripture that's given by inspiration of god and that is a man of God moved upon by the Holy Ghost who is God yes yes it would be of course thank you we just need to clarify this stuff thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee and whatsoever I command thee thou shalt speak be not afraid of their faces for I am with thee to deliver thee saith the Lord who's with him Holy Ghost and then the Lord uh, put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me behold I have put my words in your mouth whose words were those those were the words of the Holy Ghost according to other portions of your Bible and we're gonna interpret the Bible with the Bible are you getting this? so thou shalt go and I have set who is telling him to go and who set him in that office had to be the Holy Ghost are you getting this all right let's see a New Testament example you all right with that setting and going Acts chapter 13 verse 1 now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers such as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene of Manian which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul verse 2 as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said now who's speaking here the Holy Ghost said are you still here so we have the Holy Ghost saying something it might you, you know don't misinterpret this who's speaking the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost said separate me he's separating me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them who's separating them and who's calling them specifically the Holy Ghost is separating them and the Holy Ghost is calling them he says I and me and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them and sent them away so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost who sent them the Holy Ghost who said I and me I've called them separate me who said it the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost is specifically setting these men into offices the Holy Ghost specifically was calling them and setting them apart and he said I and me now we have I have many other messages on the fact that the Holy Ghost is a person that he is God he is the one that Jesus sent into the earth to, to lead and direct the church especially in this days this age the Holy Ghost dispensation 
right but he is a person and here in this verse of scripture we can see that he is self-aware he's saying I and me and he's telling people what to do because he has authority in the earth he's talking about himself personally can you see that and here this is the verse of, would you call this a verse of scripture it's inspired by the Holy Ghost and he's not only talking about himself he's talking about himself talking about himself leading the church keep going first Corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 and God hath set some in the church first apostles secondarily prophets yada yada are you here my point here is God set them in the church now who set Paul and Barnabas in the church as apostles who set them forth we just read that God the Holy Ghost we just saw it was the Holy Ghost doing it saying it I me right and then it says God has set some in the church who set them the Holy Ghost who is God say the Holy Ghost who is God he's in the earth he's setting people in offices right first Corinthians 12 verse 18 but now hath God set again who's the God that's setting him has to be the Holy Ghost I'll show you that in a minute now hath God set members every one of them how many every one of them God has set them in the body as it has pleased him who's doing it Holy Ghost and he's doing it to please himself he's doing it as it pleases him which indicates he's doing it of his own authority so when the Holy Ghost came into the earth he is God he's doing as it pleases him it's his age it's his dispensation let me read it again but now hath God set who's the God the Holy Ghost as it has pleased him so he's doing it as it pleases him let's go back up let's look at verse 6 now there are diversities of operations but it is the same God which worketh all in all the same God some different God no it has to be the same God the same one that set them as it pleased him are you here the same God works all in all look down at verse 11 but all these worketh that one say one one and self he's a self self same spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills here again he's a person that's self-aware is a self he's one has a is a self and he's doing things as he wills it says and he's working all these say all these who in the earth today is doing this the Holy Ghost his name is the Holy Ghost he's in the earth he's doing all of this stuff and he's doing it as he wills and he's doing it of his own authority are you getting this he is God all right now having read all of that he seems to be asserting himself in these verses of Scripture because these are verses of Scripture and he's the one inspiring Paul to write this is it did I just read scriptures are these scriptures yeah these are scriptures and therefore they were inspired by the Holy Ghost to say these things about the Holy Ghost in fact it says now concerning spiritual things I wouldn't have you ignorant so the Holy Ghost is inspiring Paul to write things about himself the Holy Ghost and not only that he seems to be asserting himself quite boldly emphatically to the supreme utmost in fact he says you can't even say Jesus is Lord without the Holy Ghost verse 3 are you here so he seems to be asserting himself rather boldly in fact nothing is done without him nobody's set in the church without him nothing gets done without him that's what he's saying here through these verses of Scripture if I haven't made it clear enough the Holy Ghost is saying through the Apostle Paul nothing gets done in the earth without me as I will he's God in the earth today are you getting this Holy Ghost dispensation 
welcome well how far is the you know how far does that rabbit hole go it goes really deep but you got to be willing to go there and have your eyes open go behind the veil and see the reality that you're actually living in the reality is you it's just you and the Holy Ghost in the earth and Jesus will return so if we look at that verse of Scripture all those verses of Scripture who was doing the talking the Holy Ghost and he was talking about himself he was revealing himself now we're gonna go to John chapter 16 now I'm being very methodical about this because I'm trying to lead you up to somewhere and I'm getting ready to literally trash what most people hold as sacred doctrine that frankly doesn't line up with everything that I just said in light of these facts let's look at John John 16 verse 7 nevertheless I tell you the truth it's expedient for you or profitable for you that I go away if I go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if I depart I will send him unto you so if the if the comforter has come we know that Jesus is not here because Jesus had to depart say depart to send him unto us and we're in that age when the Holy Ghost is here which means Jesus it has departed verse 8 when he is come he will now Jesus is gonna go on and say several things that talk about the Holy Ghost and what the Holy Ghost will do so we have Jesus here moved by the Holy Ghost by the way because it's in Scripture talking about himself the Holy Ghost right and when he the Holy Ghost is come he the Holy Ghost will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me Jesus of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of the world is judge I have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now now when is now here with these red letters now is Jesus on the earth pre death burial resurrection glorification right he's with them and he's saying I have many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now say now which gives us a time reference of when he's actually saying these things so some things he's gonna talk about will be in the future in fact he said that how be it when he the Ho when he the Holy Ghost or the Spirit comes which he said I will send when I go away right read verse 13 how be it when he the Spirit of truth is come is he come yet according right there in that verse of Scripture he's not come yet but he's come in our day so you'd be wrong in trying to read this verse of Scripture in light of the Holy Ghost having come does that make sense Howbeit, when he the spirit of con the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all the truth when is that from his standpoint when he has come in the future but from our standpoint it's right now he's guiding us now say he's guiding us now into all truth when he has come the spirit of truth he will guide you into all the truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever you, he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come now I'm gonna be talking about all of this verse of Scripture because there's a lot of stuff in there that we've had twisted because we thought about it number one in the wrong dispensation it's historically inaccurate right and we've also been twisting the scripture by adding things that shouldn't be there and therefore we're getting the wrong interpretation I will read on for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak he will show you things to come verse 14 he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you all things the father has are mine therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you now I have studied these verses of Scripture diligently backwards forwards year after year because they've bugged me 
bugged bugged me for a very long time because everyone and I mean everyone everyone interprets it in a way that doesn't line up with the rest of Scripture all of those scriptures that we just went through to get to this place in this message the way they're interpreting it does not line up with the rest of scripture especially in light of the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today having authority in the earth setting people in positions speaking to them as he wills are you here and I've heard it from the best I've heard it from the greatest preachers and all of them every single one of them has it wrong well how can you say that every single one because they all have it wrong I'm and I'm proving it to you tonight with this Bible so let's read it again John chapter uh, 16 verse 13 how be it when he who are we talking about the spirit of truth who's the spirit of truth he's the Holy Ghost he's the one Jesus sent to be in the earth is he God yes when he is come he will guide you into all the truth then it says for he shall not speak of himself wait beep 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 back it up a minute he shall not speak of himself that can't possibly mean what we've interpreted that to mean right in fact I know for a fact that that word of I've looked it up it's almost never translated of all the rest of the times it's it's translated mostly away from or far from to be removed from so really it should say for he shall not speak away from himself Jesus just called him the spirit of truth and that he will guide you into all the truth he can't speak anything but the truth are you seeing this not he won't speak of himself I just showed you and I've got plenty of other scriptures where I could show you even more that he certainly does speak of himself or about himself or of his own authority right but it couldn't possibly be what most preachers in fact all preachers some that I love dearly they have it wrong this and frank frankly this could possibly the, be the most misunderstood and wrongly interpreted verse of scripture ever especially when we said when I start to talk about uh, receiving the Holy Ghost for who he is God in the earth today and worshiping him as God this is one of those verses of scripture that just pops right up probably demonically inspired certainly religiously inspired oh the Holy Ghost he won't glorify himself he won't speak of himself I know you probably even thought of it and frankly that's insulting that interpretation is is insulting if your interpretation is that the Holy Ghost won't speak about himself or won't speak of his own authority or won't glorify himself then your interpretation is sadly wrong and it doesn't hold up with the rest of scripture how many of you know of people that hold to that interpretation of that scripture that he won't speak of himself he won't speak about himself he won't speak of his own authority some scriptures some translations say that he won't speak of his own authority I just showed you places where he was speaking of his own authority he clearly does speak about himself look up any verse of scripture that's talking about the Holy Ghost you know I've seen this I've seen it I can't tell you how many times I could list probably 40 sermons on the Holy Ghost online by great preachers someone consider oh they're the best in the world and they go and they talk about the person of the Holy Ghost and the wonderful works and how he you know uh, when he's come he will reprove the word of world of sin he'll do all of these things has all the characters of a person but he won't speak of himself he will only glorify Jesus almost every single one of them say that 
that he won't speak about himself he won't glorify himself he will only glorify Jesus now we're gonna we're gonna get to that in a minute and I'm gonna show you what the truth is you took the red pill right we're going down this rabbit hole but clearly he does speak about himself Jesus did so in this verse of Scripture the Holy Ghost was saying this verse of Scripture but preacher after preacher talk about the Holy Ghost and then they say that they'll literally go on and on about how great and glorious the Holy Ghost is in the age of the Holy Ghost and then they'll say but he won't talk about himself he won't do anything of his own authority and he won't glorify himself he will only listen and I know you've heard that he will only glorify Jesus and if he's not if he's saying anything about himself that's not the Holy Ghost he's got to be saying something about Jesus otherwise it's not the Holy Ghost I just read you scripture after scripture of the Holy Ghost talking about himself he seems to be quite assertive do you remember that he was very bold very assertive saying nothing 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 gets done in the earth without me get it straight and then we're gonna go talk about the Holy Ghost and we'll say that he won't even talk about himself and he won't do anything he'll all he'll own the only thing he'll do is glorify Jesus so the trouble is number one there's a lot of problems here but the trouble is people try to combine these two concepts that are two separate things combine them together and make them say something that they never said in the first place number one they'll say oh, well he won't speak of himself well uh, he speaks of himself I've shown you that Do you understand he won't speak of himself and then he'll go down here and in verse 14 it says he shall glorify me so they'll, they'll they'll combine those two things oh he won't speak of himself and he shall glorify Jesus so they'll combine those two things so he won't speak of himself he'll only speak things that glorify Jesus are you here I probably don't have to go on and on about this because that's exactly what almost everybody believes and says it's wrong so anyway you combine those two things out of order and you get something completely different you get a fake doctrine you get a false doctrine and then you get a you end up going off in the wrong direction but clearly there are two different thoughts all together let's read them uh, verse 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all the truth so we're talking about the Holy Ghost coming guiding you into all the truth he won't speak anything but of himself but the truth you understand let's just take that but but whatsoever he hears right so the Holy Ghost is coming he is leading you into all the truth he's speaking only the truth whatsoever he hears that shall he speak he will show you things to come that literally just means whatsoever comes to the ear whatsoever comes to your ear is that that's him speaking and he will show you the future that's things to come right Holy Ghost is coming he's teaching you all truth he's doing all these things you could say that's glorifying him he's coming and then he's showing you the future is this good then it says he shall glorify me that has nothing to do with the last thing we were just talking about this is a completely separate thought don't combine them he won't speak of himself skip all that stuff he shall glorify Jesus he won't speak of himself he'll glorify Jesus he won't speak of himself he'll only glorify Jesus cram are you getting this they're clearly two separate completely different thoughts now he's talking about glorifying Jesus now at this point in time was Jesus glorified no he was still on earth he never had the he didn't have the death burial and resurrection say resurrection that was him being glorified so when he's saying he'll show you things to come he'll do all these things he and he shall glorify me it didn't say and he shall only talk of me because he's not talking about himself he's got to talk about something so he'll only talk about me and if he's not talking about me then that's not the Holy Ghost wrong 
he'll do all the things the Holy Ghost is supposed to do speaking truth only truth revealing truth to you showing you things to come and he shall glorify shall say shall shall means at the time this was written it had not come to pass just like he said he shall come Holy Ghost shall come here it says Jesus he shall glorify me Jesus did he glorify Jesus yeah hold your place there I know we're coming back Romans chapter 8 verse 11 but if the spirit of him that raised Jesus up from the dead who raised Jesus up from the dead the spirit in Romans was this present tense or past tense it's past tense the spirit that raised past tense raised Jesus up from the dead that was the Holy Ghost the spirit that glorified Jesus wasn't talking about the Holy Ghost not talking about anything but Jesus is saying the Holy Ghost was actually going to glorify Jesus raise him from the dead the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead are you getting this go back to John chapter 16 and verse 14 again he shall glorify me are you here if I take that he shall glorify me and attach it to the other thought that Jesus was saying about the Holy Ghost you're gonna get messed up you're gonna come up with a, some interpretation that's just plain goofy and doesn't line up with the rest of Scripture let me go over that one more time and show you a little bit how I got there let's see uh, uh, John chapter 16 verse 13 how be it when he the person of the Spirit of truth is come he the person of the Spirit of truth will guide you into all the truth does that make sense he's truth what else is he gonna speak let me ask you a question if he's a spirit he's a speaking spirit we know he speaks what's he gonna speak truth he can only speak truth he's the spirit of truth and that's what Jesus is saying here he will guide you into all truth for say for for means he will guide you into truth for he shall not speak anything but the truth not he can't speak of himself what he can't speak off himself he can only speak the truth he can't speak off of the truth he is truth so as I'm meditating upon this and it just bugged me I told you that how be it when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into the trouble for he can't he shall not speak of himself so I'm sitting there I'm saying God what is going on here he, he shall not speak of himself I go I went and showed God uh, look at all these verses of Scripture here's the Holy Ghost talking the Holy Ghost said this the Holy Ghost said that Holy Ghost commanding this Holy Ghost doing this Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost talking doing then in remember in first Corinthians chapter 12 is that all of these are done by that one Holy Ghost as he wills so what is this he can't for he shall not speak of himself he won't speak about himself and as I was meditating on that the Spirit said to me he said stronger that's stronger and I said stronger that seems completely opposite of what I was looking for he said for he shall not speak of him stronger he cannot speak of himself he can't speak off himself it's impossible and that's the word he shall not he can't it's impossible for him to speak anything off of himself himself being truth and then he goes on to say other things whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak he will show you things to come that's honestly that has to do with the process of how he's speaking to you what it comes to the ear that's him speaking so we've got what he's gonna do the process of him doing it and then we have another thought not the same thought continued a separate distinct thought he the Holy Ghost shall glorify Jesus are you getting this and if that's not enough verse 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all the truth for he shall not speak of himself 
now another thing that trips people up here with the of in the English if I so do, if I say he won't speak of what do we think don't speak about it don't speak of it say don't speak of it so if he won't speak of himself what in our the way this is translated what does that make us think zip he's not gonna say anything about himself I've already showed you scripture after scripture him saying something about himself in fact if I get up and preach under the anointing right now I'm talking about the Holy Ghost and I'm anointed doing it right other preachers that we everybody say oh they're the best preacher in the world they're the best they're the best they would preach this and then they get up to this verse of scripture and they'd say but he won't speak of himself Shh. then what were they anointed to do what anointing was that if we interpret it that he won't speak of himself shh, and he will only speak of Jesus does it say that first of all while we're right here does it say he shall only glorify me no you're adding to scripture and you're getting the wrong interpretation if we interpret it that he won't speak about himself or won't speak of himself shh, and he will only speak about Jesus or only say things that glorify Jesus you know I could preach that in almost every church in in the country or the world and they'd all be happy with what I said the Holy Ghost will only speak of Jesus and glorify Jesus I've shown you up to this point a plethora of reasons why that is not true first Timothy chapter 4 now I just said that the Holy Ghost won't speak of himself Shh. he won't speak of it and he'll only speak of Jesus that's how we know it's the Holy Ghost because he's talking about Jesus he's glorifying Jesus oh he already glorified Jesus hold with me here first Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 what's this say now the Spirit speaks expressly right so oh hang on just hold here because if if your doctrine and the thing you've been preaching is that the Holy Ghost won't say anything except glorifies Jesus are you here then we can expect according to scriptural interpretation that the next thing that comes out of his mouth is going to be something about Jesus now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils I don't think that glorified Jesus very much did it am I missing something here because here it says the Spirit speaks expressly why because he's in the church leading the church guiding the church directing the church are you here and he's speaking to the church expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils I'm pretty sure that that really had nothing to do with glorifying Jesus that's just one example are you here so the fact is <laughs> I mean it, it's borderline ridiculous and it's, the problem is is people don't receive and respect the Holy Ghost as God so they just poo poo on him and, and push him aside and say stupid things like he won't speak of himself like he's some kind of divine mute the fact is Holy Ghost God in the earth today speaks a lot speaks a lot of things there was just one of them and he speaks about himself himself is included in the things that he speaks about I have set them I'm sending you I've anointed you are you here so it can't possibly be that the Holy Ghost won't speak of himself or about himself or he won't speak of his own authority I've already read you verses of scripture frankly that's just somebody somebody just discounting the Holy Ghost John chapter is this good I'm hoping I'm just you know I'm killing this thing you're killing it brother yeah I'm killing this this old doctrine that needs to die doctrine that's been keeping people from worshiping the Living God who is the Holy Ghost how be it when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all the truth for he shall not speak away from of himself or away from himself or off himself he has to speak the truth are you getting this 
now let me ask you a question he won't speak of himself if that's the way it's trans or that's the way you want to interpret it are you saying he won't speak truth he is this Jesus said he's the spirit of truth he's gonna guide you into the truth how's he gonna guide you into the truth if he can't speak truth and if he speaks truth he's gonna be speaking of himself and then he said he would guide you into all truth that's because he's gonna be speaking truth then you go down to verse 14 and he shall glorify me now so many things get misunderstood because they're taken out of scriptural context like I've been showing you and historical context the historical context here is that the Holy Ghost is going to glorify Jesus he was not glorified at that time but the Holy Ghost was going to do that wonderful work he shall glorify me it says so right there he shall which means it had not happened yet so he doesn't glorify Jesus as in the religious interpretation that he will only speak about Jesus because if we're taking this out of historical context we could read it that way go he'll glorify Jesus present tense Jesus don't none need to be glorified none mores you understand because he was glorified and it doesn't mean he shall just talk about Jesus because that just doesn't he make sense he doesn't glorify Jesus as in only speaking about Jesus and not about himself he did glorify Jesus he actually did it and shall glorify you let's read on here he shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine again and shall show it unto you and that word show if you look it up it really it's more than just reveal it to you it's to transmit it to you so he's gonna take all the things that Jesus had by being glorified and he's gonna reveal that to you so you can be glorified who's gonna do this the silent one the silent ghost He's the Holy Ghost he's God in the earth today are you getting this all things the father has are mine therefore said I he shall take of mine and show it unto you or transmit it unto you but people use this to say that you shouldn't worship the Holy Ghost because his only purpose is to glorify Jesus to that I say you're taking this out of context with Scripture and you're taking it out of context historically and then another thing is they say that he won't speak of his own authority and to me that is just frankly dismissive first Corinthians chapter 12 and all those things that the Holy Ghost did of his own will because he's God in the earth today so for you to say he won't do it of his own authority is dismissive to the fact that he's God and he's the one in the earth doing things everything verse 14 again y'all right with this you know I I am I'm going extra on this because it needs to be beat up on because so many people are stuck here and if you don't get over this you'll never be able to worship the Living God at the Holy Ghost in the earth today let's look at verse 14 again he shall glorify me read according to popular interpretation he shall only glorify me that's what they're saying he won't talk about himself Shh. he will only glorify me sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon is there a word only in there by the way verse 14 he shall only glorify me is that what it says no there's no there's no only in there he shall future glorify Jesus but that's not the only one he's gonna glorify because then he goes on and talks about how he's going to reveal things and glorify you just like he glorified Jesus he said that he's gonna show you things to come he's gonna transmit all the things that Jesus has to you isn't that a glory isn't that glorifying you yeah it is so he's not just only glorifying Jesus he already did that but now he's gonna glorify you 2 Corinthians 3 17 now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is Liberty but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord so we are changed by the Spirit of the Lord he is glorifying us we go from glory to glory that's called glorifying 
are you here so if you say that the Holy Ghost he shall only glorify Jesus wrong interpretation again limiting interpretation are you seeing this even as by the Spirit of the Lord so here we see the Holy Ghost is the one who glorifies you even if you prescribed to that interpretation that sad old infinitely wrong interpretation that he the Holy Ghost won't glorify himself as in now we're adding the word glorify instead of speak of you'd be so completely wrong by the way does that mean you shouldn't glorify him even if it said that even if you interpreted that that oh you're the Holy Ghost we're not uh, that he won't glorify himself it doesn't mean you shouldn't you should come to the realization that he is God and you should worship him as God we're beholding his glory and are changed into the same image of his glory from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord even as by him he's doing it he's doing it he's doing it I hope that I've shown you that especially in the verses of Scripture there in John chapter 16 those verses that everyone uses and I mean everyone that say that the Holy Ghost isn't to be worshiped or glorified I hope that I've shown you tonight that that can't possibly mean what they say that it says it can't possibly mean that in fact it's quite the opposite they've taken it out of context scripturally and historically and making it say something else but we've come to the place where we know the Holy Ghost is God he is to be worshiped John 4 24 says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him I must worship him we see that he certainly speaks you still here he certainly speaks the Spirit speaks expressly he speaks he speaks with authority in the earth in our day in our dispensation ultimate authority he's the only one doing it in the earth today he glorified past tense Jesus get it he shall glorify you from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord and without him it's not going to happen and with the wrong scriptural interpretation of those verses of scripture you're never going to get there now I've exposed to you the new reality that you can live in welcome to reality Holy Ghost I pray for these people let them know you as God I ask you to go and visit them and reveal yourself to them that they may worship you and we worship you Holy Ghost and I thank you that as they do worship you and use the words I worship you Holy Ghost great things says the Spirit of the Lord shall begin to change on the inside of you and as you yield to me and understand and know that I am God I shall take you from glory to glory we shall be glorified in Jesus name and I thank you for watching amen Holy Ghost, oh God.